Hello there, common wolf from the champions, the elite of the four allied tribes of the kingdom of Hyrule. The would-be victors, who instead of receiving a triumph, fell in battle despite their special power, all due to the calamity and the blights. And the only thing left of them are spirits. So today, we'll go over them, their still allied descendants, and more and more likely, historic ancestors in this long-awaited fury. So be sure to leave a like and subscribe as we are less than 2,000 away from 300,000 subscribers and with it our Switch OLED Plus game giveaway. And we waited with this one until a voice actor did a Tom Holland. <laughs> Perfect. To anyone confused, a certain voice actor leaked a potential key detail about the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The champions in the sequel are expected to play a role again, but in a different way than previously expected, aka the reason why I waited with this theory until we had something more specific. Then Italian Daruk after the delay of Breath of the Wild 2 gave us the following information before a new trailer, stating that he is voicing not one character, that being Daruk, but also his ancestor in the sequel. And yes, he actually said ancestor, and is not pointing to his successor Yunobo, who is voiced by a different voice actor in Italian. No doubt this is the greatest and in truth the only Breath of the Wild 2 leak yet. And it in many ways point out the following, that just like much else in the sequel, the champions will likely also go in three. The champions 10,000 years ago, 100 years ago and the present. The first two as spirits and the present as the still alive though not yet official successors to the fallen. An order, sort of like the sages of the past, who stood up against evil even if it was to cost their life, all to protect Hyrule from the threat of evil. Then what can be said about the two new branches of champions? Well, that one of them will likely be found in the heavens, the spiritual realm. The spirits of King Rome, Princess Mipha, Daruk, Rivali and Gerudo Chifurbosa only lingered around on the surface until Calamity Ganon and Darkbeast Ganon had been destroyed. From here, they went up to the invisible realm up in the sky. The job was done and now they could join their ancestors in heaven. Peace and quiet, knowing that if anything happens, the successes, Sidon, Yunobo, Teba and Riju would handle it. Well that was until Link and Zelda witnessed Ganondorf's resurrection on the ground, the princess fell down, while Link eventually ended up in the same sky as the spirits. Though not getting there fully as a spirit, what is likely to follow is probably a rather odd reunion and realization of the champion spirits that with Ganondorf's takeover of the surface, all forces are needed to defeat him, both on the surface and from the heavens, a combined effort of the deceased and new generation of champions. In this case, it wouldn't surprise me if the deceased champions 100 years ago might ask Link to reach the deceased champions from 10,000 years ago and ask for their aid and weaponry to aid Link and the descendants on the surface. 10,000 years is a long time, and naturally these champions don't know the hero of the wild, as they only knew their own champion who wielded the Master Sword in their victorious battle against the Calamity. As we all remember in Breath of the Wild, reaching the Divine Beasts and the trapped champion spirits within them was a set of trials in itself. Thus, there's no reason to assume that the ancestors from 10,000 years ago will be any easier to reach since they might be located in four corners of the new sky. In our previous Zelda theory, we proposed that there might be three sky dungeons slash temples tied to the three golden goddesses. But what if these are instead the three final ones that have to be unlocked by first gaining the trust of the four ancient champions? Think a role reversal of the traditional Zelda dungeon structure. Let's remember, until Breath of the Wild, all 3D Zelda games minus Majora's Mask had three opening dungeons, following by pulling the Master Sword. This time, it might be opposite four dungeons of the ancient champions, perhaps to fix the Master Sword, and then have additional temples to further enhance it, perhaps by the Golden Goddesses, much like the Flame of Furor, Nehru and Din, shaped the Master Sword and Skyward Sword. Now that would bring things full circle. Either that, or we are in for another round of time travel in the Legend of Zelda series, a staple since Ocarina of Time in 1998. After all, series producer Eiji Anuma stated in the delay announcement that, However, the expanded world goes beyond just the sky, so there could be something to it. And on top of all the possible dungeons we have outlined for now, there could also be dungeons on the surface, and obviously Hyrule slash Ganondorf's castle, and that would give us at least 8 dungeons in the sequel. Quite the upgrade from Breath of the Wild's 4 Divine Beasts and Hyrule Castle. Along the path, much like in Breath of the Wild, we could see memories of the last triumphant champions who grew old before passing away. A story that we only know the outcome of, but not the build up to or aftermath. And this one could be structured much like in the case of the champions 100 years ago, after being told about their defeat by King Rome, a basis that has to be expanded through memories, after Link's memory loss in the Shrine of Resurrection. 
Hence, they also need to be voiced. And clearly, we already know that they will be voiced thanks to Daruk here. As he stated that he is voicing both Daruk and the Ancestor Champion in the sequel. With the matter of voice acting covered thanks to the Rook, let's also not forget that the pilots of the Divine Beast were the elite of their tribes at the time, and they will be skeptical of Link until perhaps the hand signals to them. It is just that I don't think the hand we see here is the same as the Link from the battle 10,000 years ago, since they didn't know about Gandalf, as they became champions much like the champions 100 years ago to defeat Calamity Gun. Hence, the hand might not be of help right here, since even if this is a past Link, it is more likely the spiritual ancestor of the Link found on the tapestry. One that didn't fight Ganondorf's calamity, but the last Link to fight Ganondorf himself and defeat him in battle, all so that he could be sealed. Anyway, that covers the ancestors, since this sequel with a far greater threat might require a united front from both heaven and earth. The champion spirits from 10,000 years ago with their powers or weapons from 100 years ago who might or might not return back to the divine beasts again if they are still usable. And on top of that, we know that Link was gifted their powers, or which Link might also have lost after they went back to the heavens. You know those who are still alive on the surface, and Link will gain replacement powers in the sky, just like the symbols on the hand replaces the runes of the Sheikah Slate in the sequel. I'm only saying it is possible, which brings us back down to Zora Prince Sidon, Goron Yunobo, Rito Teba, and Gerudo Chief Riju. All are now threatened by Ganondorf's return to power and need to be prepared to succeed the champion spirits they heard about, so with their own eyes, or share their youth with. Sidon as the future ruler of the Zora Kingdom with battle experience will no doubt be ready for the war to come. Teba also has some experience, but the greater concern is with the younger ones, Yunobo and Riju, who don't possess the same experience in battle. For some time, it was expected that they will become new pilots, or if the Divine Bee is out of commission, they might also serve a different role, as true commanders of their people. You may have noticed it, but outside of Gerudo Chief Riju, the three other champion tribes are ruled by elderly figures, Zora King Dorafan, Goron Boss Bludo, and Rito Elder Chieftain Kaneli. All of them can be said to be past their prime, and a the theme of the sequel might thus be succession with Sidon, Yunobo, Teba and Riju commanding the forces into battle. And here we reach the final point of this video, where I need to ask those who haven't beaten Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity and don't want to be spoiled to click away. And the reason is the implication of the inter-timeline branch travel found in that game. All of the descendants slash successors of the champions saved the champions in a different timeline than their own, and also gained all the battle experience they needed before the sequel by piloting the Divine Beasts together with the ancestors and then fighting Asta, Harbinger Ganon, and Calamity Ganon in Hyrule Castle. Then again, a simple memory wipe of these battles might solve this most controversial point of Age of Calamity to not have any impact on the sequel. But if this one doesn't exist, and indeed Sidon, Yunobo, Teba, and Riju remember their involvements in the Victory timeline, then this changes everything, making them more than suitable Divine Beast pilots if they still were and capable commanders of the Zora, Goron, Rito and Gerudo forces. At the end of Age of Calamity's main quest, they were sent back to a time before or perhaps even during the sequel itself. So the possibility is still there, and with the slip of the Italian voice actor of Daruk, it seems that the champions will have a role, if not even a key role to play in the sequel. Unless the successors also came from a different Age of Calamity timeline that isn't the one from Breath of the Wild. But that is a Hyrule Warriors problem. Either way, we could witness the following from the champions. Uniting together and having three generations of champions storming Hyrule Field and Castle in the build-up to Link's destined battles against Ganondorf, with or without Princess Zelda. Then again, it would be weird if Princess Zelda wasn't commanding this ground attack. And that is the exciting part about this sequel, the potential, including the champions. It is so immense in all the three layers that this game will take place in, and with the inclusion of the sky, can include so many returning and brand new characters from multiple different time periods all eventually united against Ganondorf and his far stronger and combined army. And that is all we have for now regarding the new ancestor spirit champions from 10,000 years ago, the returning spirit champions from 100 years ago, and the successors of them all on the surface of Hyrule. With that being said, we would love to hear your opinion regarding the new and returning champions in the sequel, so share them in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, then be sure to smash that like and subscribe button since we are less than 2,000 away from 300,000 and with it, I will switch OLED plus game giveaway. So let's get there before my 30th birthday on June 13th. 
A big thanks goes to all of you who watched until the end, and to our patreon.com slash common realm patrons, and in particular, role producer Chalshesh. You rock, and please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos.